the next part to be assembled is obviously the connecting rod. These are the cross heads or cross head, nicely made with a bronze bush in there. The only thing I don't like about them is there's no way of getting any oil into that bush. I think it should be drilled through there uh, with an oil hole. All the engines I've seen worked on have got oil holes in the end of there. There's a closer shot of them. Nice bronze bush. Not bolts. That's fastened at the top of the connecting rod. So before I assemble it, I'm going to drill these in the middle of each one and put an oil hole in, just so I can dribble a little bit of oil in as and when it runs. It doesn't need to be a massive hole, in fact that centre drill will be ideal because it will go straight through the bush and it will also leave a countersunk hole right in the middle of there to hold the oil. So that's all the way through. Right, it's left a nice little recess to hold the oil. Very happy with that. I'll have to deburr the inside of that, but that's not going to be a problem. These are numbered, that's number one, and obviously that's number two. You see how the little oil holes are going to work? A drop of lubricating oil in there, that's all it takes. The piston rod, or the connecting rod, is also numbered one and two, so that goes on there that way. I'm going to bolt that on next. And it's got two nice BSF bolts go through there. Uh, one thing that the big end is lubricated from what I can see by oil basically running down that hole and coming out of that hole in the bottom there. That's the way it's designed. Um, I don't know. That's the way it's designed, so that's the way I'll put it back together. I mean, how the oil gets into there, and I would like to see a much bigger recess in there, or a much bigger counter sink in there, so you can actually squirt a bit of oil in with an oil can. I think what I'll do is I'll make that deeper. It, it can't do any harm putting a bigger oil well in there. I mean, this engine's strange because it, it, I don't think it's been ran much, but everything's been bastardised and repairing it. It really is strange. There's two dowel holes in the bottom. And there's two dowel holes in the top bearing cap, or two dowels. And that's the oil hole to lubricate the big end here, which isn't very big. Okay, so that's the oil hole in there. See y'all coming out the bottom of the bottom of the rod. I put a bigger counter sink in there to collect a bit more oil. That's the oil hole in the bottom, <coughs> which corresponds with that little oil hole there, and that's what feeds the big end. It's the way it's been designed and built, I suppose, so it's the way it must go.
Right then, here up your bastard. Bastard thing. Come on, John. Shut up. I might actually mill a slot in there to get even more oil into it, I'm not sure. See what it runs like and what it feel like at the time. I'm not going to fully tighten these yet until I get the, the big end put together, which is what's going to happen next. nicely made bolts like dull bolts that go through there that's the big end cap there's no bronze in here it's just it's, this'll be cast in I would imagine it's just hasn't got a hasn't got a bronze bushing I don't know why I would expect it to have It had double nuts on the bottom and it had lock nuts as well. So again these are BSF. It's sort of coming to life now. A little bit of tool abuse here. They're tight. No end fluid at all on there. You normally get a little bit of end fluid. Tolerances are really tight. Something's it's kind of locking up down there. Doesn't feel nice. Did all that bit. feels good at the top well not too bad but at the bottom it's really really notchy there I 
feel it sort of knocking over the top of itself. And I've actually took the nut off the, off the piston so it's not, that's not causing the problem. Something's bending up. There's no play at all in that crosshead, like sideways play. I think the first thing I made to do was put a little bit of play in there by taking a little bit off those faces on that on them bushes just to give it a little bit of wiggle move wiggle room there's very little on the big end if any so that's the first thing we'll do we'll take a little bit off there just to give a little bit more clearance and then go from there nothing at all is <laughs> straightforward this bastard thing right so there's no side to side movement at all of that crosshead it's absolutely solid to the point where it's actually bound and it's tight. And that's what I'm going to be doing. I'll take a little bit off this brass thrust in there just to give it a little bit of wiggle room. I'm just going to drop onto the big end on the crank. It's right at, it's right at the edge of its amount of travel. So that's the first thing I'm going to do, take a bit off there. Once again, it just remains to see you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. As always, if you haven't subscribed, please do. It does make a big difference. Anyway, thanks for watching.